第61回元日本バンタム級チャンピオン池原信人そしてレフェリー染谷道明さて史上最高の日本人対決ここまでの日本人対決も振り返っていただきます。As we take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event, Kazuto Ioka, Kosei Tanaka. Tanaka moving up to 115 pounds, looking to become the fastest four weight division world champion in the history of boxing. Ioka, he's already achieved that feat, a four division champion, the very first in the history of Japanese boxing. Ioka, just two losses on his record to Amnat Ruinrong and to Donnie Nietes. Tanaka, undefeated in his pro career. The measurables, fairly even when it comes to these two. A lot of talk prior to this fight about the resting heart rate of both fighters. Kosei Tanaka with a resting heart rate of 49 beats per minute. That is elite marathoner level stuff. Ioka's uh, heart rate uh, a little bit higher, although it could have been uh, due to a variety of factors. Maybe he was uh, on the exercise bike before he showed up for the medicals. None of that matters right now. And if backstage conduct is an indication of anything, Tanaka was gloved up and in his robe for quite some time before he walked. Ioka didn't even have his trunks on until about 10 minutes before he walked to the ring, looking very relaxed backstage. He has been on this stage before, and he is acting like it. ニホン最速で世界2階級制覇を達成元WBAWBC統一世界ミニマム級チャンピオン世界最速で3階級制覇を達成した元WBAWBC統一世界フライ級チャンピオン本日2度目の防衛戦日本初の男子世界4階級制
scheduled for 12 rounds. The WBO Super Flyweight title on the line. See Ioka in the gray and silver trunks. Tanaka, the aggressor here in the early going. And the all black. Right away, Ioka assuming the role of the boxer. He is a beautiful technical boxer to watch. Some of the best footwork in all of boxing. Tanaka, maybe the best pure offensive fighter in the sport. A truly electric offensive fighter. And Ioka is going to have to tame that if he wants to stop what Tanaka is proposing as a generational change here tonight. Both these men fought exactly one year ago on the same card that was headlined by Ioka as he scored a unanimous decision victory over Javier Cintron. Tanaka picked up an easier than expected knockout victory over Wulan Tuolahazi inside three rounds. Good combination there from Ioka. Trying to temper the rapid pace of Tanaka, who, if he gets going, can be a whole lot to handle. Ioka, good sign for him. He's already landed his jab flush a couple of times. Body work there from Ioka as well. Tanaka not afraid to let his hands go either. Exactly what we expected here in the early going. Both these men have waited a full year to get back in the ring. They have dealt with all the same things we've dealt with in 2020. They've been in isolation waiting for this fight effectively for 365 days. A triple left hook there from Ioka and a counter right hand over the top. An intriguing opening round and an encouraging one for the champion Ioka. So take a look back at some of the action from the opening round. There was that flush right hand from Tanaka. That came mere seconds into the bout. Things got a little better for Ioka as that round went on. We'll see how things progress here as we enter round two. Tanaka, a calculated pressure fighter, an outstanding combination puncher. Combination on the inside from Ioka. You know, I describe Ioka as a master boxer in the opening round, but as his career has gone on, he's shown a willingness to get in the pocket a little more frequently than he did early in his career. And some of that more recently may have been due to the height and the dimensions of his opponents, Aston Palikde and Javier Cintron, very tall, super flyweight, so almost out of necessity, he had to be a little closer to his opponent than he had been in the past, but 
He has always been a terrific body puncher. Shots. Right hand starting to rain in from Tanaka. Yoka gives him a little head nod, acknowledging the work from Tanaka. Rodioka replying with some good work of his own. A little showmanship there as he pops a couple of jabs in the face of the challenger. High level stuff, just as we expected. We enter the final minute of the second frame. Good work there from Ioka. And that right hand comes over the top. That's one of his hallmarks, rolling under the jab and coming over the top with the right hand. You'll see Ioka just shift his body weight to his left and still come over the top of the right hand there. Tanaka was looking for it, but he ate a jab in the process. Momentum swings even inside one round. Ioka and Tanaka giving us everything we expected already through two. Take a look back at some of the action from round two. Both men trading power shots at various points in that round. Tanaka focuses on the body as he opens round three. And Tanaka has said that this fight is kind of like the, the closing of a chapter in his career. He has said that this will be his last fight with his father as his lead trainer. He said he wants to reward him with this fourth world title for everything he's taught him. And he wants to move on to even bigger fights against names like Juan Francisco Estrada and Roman Gonzalez. But funny enough, those are the names that Ioka is looking at as well. He has been in their orbit for quite some time. The body work there from Tanaka. Goes back downstairs again and a clubbing right hand up top. Snapping jab there from Ioka. Who really is one of the most accurate body punchers in the sport. Both these men are really. You know, we often describe fighters as good body punchers, but seldom do you get guys like Ioka and Tanaka who regularly 
finish fights with devastating body punches. Both these men with just tremendous left hooks to the body. There's a good chopping right hand from Tanaka. Final 30 seconds of round three. Another right hand connects from Tanaka. Trying to put an exclamation point on this round is the challenger. And we see Ismail Salas in the corner of Kazuto Ioka. He arrived in Japan on Tuesday. Oyoka had to go through camp without him. Of course, the father of Kosei Tanaka, Hitoshi Tanaka, lead trainer, perhaps for the final time tonight. That's the left hook that we were talking about from Ioka. Partially blocked there from Tanaka. Tanaka both started and finished round three very well. But you would have to say, in terms of the pacing of this fight, this hasn't been a bad look for Ioka so far. He has managed to temper that electric, overwhelming pressure of Tanaka. Although, when Tanaka has let his hands go, it's still been impressive. Tanaka throws a six-punch combination there. Not all of it landing. Ioka welcomes it and says, come on, and now tries to back Tanaka. A little sweeping right hook from Tanaka, and he tries to dig to the body with an uppercut. Both men with such fluid and creative offense. Oh, the right hook connects from Ioka there. Final minute of round four. As the pendulum swings back and forth between the old guard of Kazuto Ioka and the budding superstar, Kosei Tanaka. Body work there from Ioka finishes that combination with a jab upstairs. Good overhand right connects from Ioka as well. And now blood starting to pour from the nose of Tanaka. Tanaka's defense has shown to be leaky in the past. And Ioka is finding those holes here in the early going.
You see the defense of Ioka. In, in real time, that combination looked very impressive. You slow it down. You see that Ioka wasn't really bothered at all by anything in that sequence. As we enter round five, Tanaka's corner has some work to do on the face of their fighter. And he definitely gets hit, but what is encouraging if you're, if you're a backer of Ioka is how confident he has been, especially over the last two rounds, in letting his hands go and putting punches together in combination. He's not just trying to temper the offense of Tanaka. He is backing Tanaka up at times and has felt compelled to put shots together in combination. Now you see an emboldened Ioka now walking Tanaka back behind a guard. He's putting the high guard up. Putting Tanaka under some duress. And normally that's what Tanaka would want. In general, Tanaka welcomes exchanges because nine times out of ten, he gets the better of them. But tonight, he's in there with the best fighter he's ever faced. And a tremendous counter punch. Good shot over the top from Yoka as well. Now before that sequence, there was a jab that landed from Tanaka. Yoka kind of welcomed another one and countered over the top with a right hand, and he flattens Tanaka with a counter left. Oh, Tanaka may be in serious trouble here, but there's not enough time for Ioka to capitalize. What a start for the champion, Kazuto Ioka. Let's take a look back at this shot from Ioka. A picture perfect counter left hook. And Kosei Tanaka has found a level of adversity he has not had to overcome in his career. He's been in wars. He's been hurt before. But he has never been in this kind of trouble against this caliber of an operator. Now the 
right hand connects from Ioka a moment ago. Another one. The uppercut start to rain in, and Ioka starting to roll his hands, starting to find his rhythm. He said before this fight, I'm not particularly impressed with Tanaka. And he might have been the only one who would watch Tanaka and come to that conclusion. But certainly he saw something that he could exploit, and he is doing so here in the first half of this fight. Yoka just ripping combinations right now. And over the last minute, Tanaka has been getting into the spaces where he wants to be, but hasn't been letting his hands go. Now trying to find his rhythm, maybe work behind his jab, but he runs into another left hook. Tanaka said it was time for a generational change. It may not be that time quite yet. The second knockdown scored by Kazuto Ioka. Under 40 seconds left in round six. A little more time to capitalize on that knockdown than number one. But Tanaka giving it everything he's got, trying to fire back. You certainly can't count out a fighter with the power and the offensive talent of Tanaka. But he has been surprisingly not just outboxed, but outgunned. We'll take a look back at the second knockdown. Nearly an identical shot, although this one not set up by a right hand like the first knockdown. A shot that did the damage. Virtually identical. And having hit the canvas twice, and perhaps having lost some or many of the early rounds as well, the ones that didn't feature knockdowns, you'd have to think that Tanaka is almost entering the stage of this fight where he has to really just lay it on the line. And in doing so, puts himself in jeopardy of running in to some of those same shots that have put him on the canvas twice. Really selling out to get on the inside here. But taking some punishment the moment he gets there. Tanaka fires back with a right hand. And frankly, even if he weren't in the circumstance that he's in right now with the knockdowns and potentially on the scorecards, having seen what we've seen, this just may be his best shot. Because on the outside, he is getting timed and hurt 
But maybe on the inside, he can make use of his hand speed and his strength. And just out hustle Ioka. But Ioka does not seem bothered by standing in there with Tanaka. Tanaka goes to the body, brings a chopping right hand behind that combination downstairs. Now they trade uppercuts on the inside. Tanaka trying to become the fastest four division world champion in the history of boxing. He would beat Oscar De La Hoya's record were he to be victorious here tonight. But he has quite the mountain to climb right now. Final 10 seconds of round seven, a much better round for Tanaka. Day begins. We'll see if Tanaka can keep up the pressure and continue to get to the inside where it would appear he has his best shot. Though interesting to note that Ioka should be very prepared for that kind of fight. He spent plenty of time sparring Daigo Higa throughout training camp, his gym mate at the Ambition Gym. We'll see Higa coming up after our main event in the co-feature. Higa will be taking on Yuki Strong Kobayashi. Right now is a pair of former Bantamweight champions, just like, excuse me, 112 pound champions, just like Higa. Going toe to toe in the center of the ring. Good left hook to the body there from Ioka. And an uppercut and a right hand. Oh, Tanaka rattled with that left hook, and that is it. He is out on his feet in the arms of the referee, and Kazuto Ioka has thwarted the efforts of Kosei Tanaka. Ioka said before this fight, what I have and what he has is very different. And Ioka showed that at least right now, he is still on a different level than Kosei Tanaka. Wow. Oh, it 
unfortunately I can't translate for you, but you saw the laugh from Tanaka as if to say, wow, I didn't expect that either. And I don't know too many people who did. Ioka was a betting underdog coming into this fight. And this is not the end of the road for Kosei Tanaka. Who still has another seven fights to play with should he want to become the fastest four weight division world champion. But he bit off just a little bit too much in Kazuto Ioka, who found all the holes in the defense of Tanaka, who, again, in terms of pure offense, might be one of the most electric fighters in the sport. But that man, that's a counterpuncher on a different level. New Year's Eve still belongs to this man, Kazuto Ioka, for the ninth time headlining on New Year's Eve. And he said, not so fast, Kosei Tanaka. Well, let's hear from the champion. Technical knockout to the Master Ioka Kato Sensu desu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. First of all, let me tell you the feeling of now. Let me tell you the feeling of now. This fight has been decided by Oumisaka. The boxing members of the boxing, Ryo Jinye, Tanaka Sensu, and the sponsor of Kata-Kata, こういうコロナ禍の状況の中、この試合が無事に開催できたことをまずは皆さんにお礼を言いたいです。ありがとうございます。その大晦日で全勝そして勝てば四階級制覇というその田中選手を破ったその思いいかがでしょうか。そうですね。僕からしたら全然サプライズな試合ではないんですけど、まあ言ってきた通り格の違いを見せるって言い続けてきたので。まあ、男として口だけで終わるわけではいかないのでこうしてまた結果で証明できたことをすごく良かったなと思いますしまあでも田中選手は僕はねもうあとどれぐらいボクシングを続けてるかわからないですけど彼はまだまだこれからの選手なんで必ず彼がボクシング界今後引っ張ってくれると思うのでまあそういう選手と今日こうして拳を交えることができて僕もすごくいい経験になりました。今年はこれまでと違ってコロナ禍の2020年、井岡選手を支えたもの、そしてコロナ禍の中でも会場に集まった皆さん、そしてテレビをご覧の皆さんがいらっしゃいます、今の思いをぜひ聞かせてくださいそうですね、まずこのコロナ感染拡大が全然目処が立たない中、こうして会場に足を運んでくださった、えー、ボクシングファンの皆様、本当にありがとうございます。えー、そして今格闘技がねすごく日本でもただあの他の格闘技も盛り上がっていていろいろやってるんですけどこうしてボクシングっていうものを魅力を僕は伝えれたらいいなと思ってるので今日、ね、田中選手がいてこの試合になり立ちましたけどこれが「This is ボクシングだと思うのでこれからもそういう試合をしていきたいと思ってますこれだけの大歓声です最後に一言お願いします、えーそうですねあの言い残すことあまり結構喋ってないんですけど、まあ、これからまだね、来年こうどうなっていくかわからないですけど、期待してくださってる皆さんにの期待を応えるっていうのが僕の今のもやっていく中での一つの気持ちですし、その中で家族の支えがあって、息子がいて、まあ、これから。そういう方たちと同じ景色を共感で共有できるように共感できるように頑張っていきます今日は本当にありがとうございました
最強の挑戦者を見事跳ね返しました井岡和人選手でしたおめでとうございました So Kazuto Ioka still your WBO super flyweight champion. He said, I want to show the difference in class between me and Tanaka here tonight. And he certainly did that. And that is taking nothing away from Kosei Tanaka, who no doubt will still go on to a brilliant career. But right now, Kazuto Ioka is still the king of Tokyo. A lot of people thought that this would be the crowning moment for Kosei Tanaka, that he would become the next boxing superstar in Japan. And what we got instead was the best performance of Kazuto Ioka's career. And wow, do you have to get excited about the prospect of Ioka versus Estrada, Ioka versus Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, or really, any name at 115 pounds. There is a lot left in the tank. And a lot more main events here in Tokyo for this man. Still the WBO champion, Kazuto Ioka. You see Yoka greeting his family. A modest crowd here at the Ota City General Gymnasium in Tokyo. Might have noticed a, an interesting environment here tonight in that cheering was discouraged. A lot of applause from the crowd, but officials here in Japan trying to keep things as safe as they possibly can while still permitting attendance. And what a moment for this man. Well, coming up next, you don't want to miss this one. It is our co-feature in the Bantamweight division, the former 112-pound WBC champion, Daigo Higa, taking on the always exciting Yuki Strong Kobayashi. It is our co-feature coming up next. <laughs> Time now for our co-feature in the Bantamweight division. And as wild as this may sound, given the quality of our main event, this fight could potentially be a show stealer. It is between Yuki Strong Kobayashi and the former world champion, the former WBC flyweight world titleist, Daigo Higa. This one promises to be an action-packed affair between two all-action fighters. Iga, of course, the former 112-pound titleist now fighting at Bantamweight. He'll be taking on a man looking to rise up from the regional level here in Japan to score the biggest win of his career. Let's send it down to the center of the ring to introduce our fighters.
The sharp bettors out there have bet this line all the way down to make Daigo Higa just a four to one favorite by the time the bell rings. And what an opportunity for this man, a Yuki Strong Kobayashi with a record of 16, eight, 16 and 8 with 9 knockouts. And what a story it would be for a 16 and 8 fighter going from club fighter to potential title challenger by beating Daigo Higa. This is a man who is ranked inside the top 15 by two of the sanctioning bodies, number 13 by the WBO and number 9 by the IBF. When you look at this on paper,